Yes, I know. I'm playing um, Chasaya's music. He has allowed us to use it. Mukotoni woka yapya, iyo nalelo. Mukotoni woka yapya, ni woka yapya, uwa ona ulavana. Owe ye, owe ye lelo, iyo nalelo. Owe ye lelo, ni woka yapya, uwa ona ulavana. Owe ye. Our viewers, wherever you're watching us all over the world, welcome to this special edition of uh, TV Makwetu. In this show tonight, to help us discuss the topic, which is uh, economic diplomacy, Zambia's new foreign policy focus. We have Dr. His Excellency, Dr. Elas Munsha. Zambia's High Commissioner to the Commonwealth of Australia and New Zealand. Dr. Musha, welcome to the program. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chilofia, for having me. I have missed TV Vakwit and I'm very excited to be back here. Thank you for extending the invitation uh, for me to be part of your show tonight. Thank you. Or this so much, morning Dr. here in Australia. I know. Thank you so much, Dr. Musha. And um, 
my co-host, Mr. Nelson Bimbe, will come to the program. Thank you very much, Mr. Chirufia, and thank you, Dr. Mucha, for joining us tonight. Yeah, just a bit of the background before we, we get into the questions. Since the becoming of since the coming in of the new Don government, we've been constantly bombarded with the word economic diplomacy from the president, the minister of foreign affairs and international relations, and many other, including yourself, your excellence, Dr. Elias Moshe. According to Diplo, economic diplomacy is concerned with international economic issues to enhance prosperity, which has been the main priority for states in most regions of the world. In a broad sense, economic diplomacy can be defined as diplomatic activity that promotes the state's economic interests. It also includes diplomacy that uses economic resources to achieve a specific foreign policy objective. In a narrow sense, economic diplomacy is about export, export promotion and inward investments. This is sometimes called commercial diplomacy. Thank you, Dr. Munsha, once again, and over to you, Mr. Bimbe, for the first question. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chulufia, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, I just have a question for Your Excellency. Uh, what uh, Mr. Chulufia has just mentioned uh, regarding the, the economic diplomacy. Yes. So does this statement resonate with GRZ's definition? And what are your comments on that? Yes, it's very consistent with... Um, the focus of our foreign policy as a, as a country. And um, the, the, the most crucial aspect is the fact that our diplomacy now is going to be centered around Zambia's interest, that is the economic interest of our country. Uh, that comes first. And in so doing, our focus is on what is it that the people of Zambia are looking forward to having. What are their priorities? The priorities for the people of Zambia right now is that there is a meal for every child, there is education for every child, that we provide prosperity to our people, employment, jobs, investments in agriculture, investments in mining, and not only investments in mining as at just mining the, 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 the raw products from the ground, but rather refining and extract, ex, extraction of minerals and ensuring that we, we add value, we add value to our products. Those are the priorities that the president received from the people of Zambia, and the president is working to fulfill those priorities. Thank you, Dr. Uh, from what, yeah, From what you've explained, uh, you've answered my second question, <laughs> why economic diplomacy? So I might just uh, ask you just another question. So, just going, taking you back, uh, of course, it could be wrapped in the why, why now? So it's more, you know, what was the focus from previous governments? You know, has this focus of diplomat, diplomats come too late or is it too late or is it just the right time now? Uh, economic diplomacy has been part and parcel of Zambia's foreign mm. policy for a very long time. As a matter of fact, it, it, when, when it is contrasted, it, it's usually contrasted with political diplomacy. Now, political diplomacy is, um, and, and Zandi still continues to engage in political diplomacy, except that due to the priorities that the people of Zambia have imposed on the president, the president has decided to prioritize economic diplomacy, meaning we take into account, first of all, 
the economic interests of our country so that we can uh, exploit our natural resources in a manner that benefits the people of Zambia. So yes, it, uh, political diplomacy still remains as a matter of fact, even to date, much of um, what we have been doing so far is political diplomacy. The very fact that we are present in an Australian capital here in Canberra is political diplomacy. Our presence at the United Nations in New York is political diplomacy. Our presence in, um, in, in promoting peace in the Democratic Republic of Congo, or our presence in promoting peace in Mozambique, that is political di diplomacy. But we are now at a stage where, in addition to political diplomacy, we are going to see that we prioritize economic diplomacy to bring clear uh, dividends to every Zambian so that we grow as an economy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Musha. Um, I pass it on to Mr. Chilufia. Um, Dr. Musha, that was fantastic. Uh, now I come to a big question. Uh, this question is loaded, Dr. Musha, and, um, and I hope we, we, you're gonna take a long time to answer this question. As our representative to the Commonwealth of Australia and New Zealand, give us four areas that you will be focusing on. And for each, A, describe what it is and what you intend to achieve. And then two, what plans have you put in place to help you to achieve it? And then three, what metrics are you going to use to measure the achievement? Or in other words, how are you going to know that we have, we have arrived at our point of arrival? D, how does it fit into the overall economic diplomacy metra? And finally, what is the time framework? So take your time, Ms. Dr. Munsha. It's a loaded question. Over right. to you. Uh, thank you very much. Now, there are at least four areas of focus for our work here in, in Australia. And it's, it's not just rest restricted to Australia, but in many other uh, missions as well. Of course, uh, sometimes uh, uh, the language is, is different, but it's, it's the same core areas that we try to focus on. And the reason why I'm using this language here today is because I want to make it as um, as, as, as easy to understand uh, from the perspective of our people. Uh, now, the first area of, uh, of, 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 of focus is the fact that we as diplomats and Zambia in its uh, role as a, as a diplomatic nation is first of all to, to uh, promote world peace. Uh, by promoting world peace, it means that we as a country belong to a family of nations. And what we are trying to situate ourselves within this family of nations is that nations should live together, is that nations should live together in peace. Now, sometimes it's very difficult to have a measurable um, uh, objective out of this. Are we going to say that we are going to achieve this promotion of peace if there is no war in the world? Uh, sometimes we have very little control about how other nations react to different situations. However, as a nation, we have taken a clear stand that we are going to be in the business of promoting peace. And that's exactly what we have done in Mozambique. Zambia right now has advisors on the ground, has equipment on the ground to try and bring calm and peace to our neighbors in Mozambique. Zambia has been involved with promoting peace in Central African Republic. Zambia has been um, uh, at the forefront in trying to promote peace in Somalia. And we've been sending not only armed forces, but also uh, uh, soft and peaceful power, such as uh, policing uh, powers. 
All these go to demonstrate that Zambia is ready and available in order to work together with other countries to promote peace. The other um, uh, things that we have done as a nation is when you look at the Russian and Ukrainian war, Zambia was among the first nations that stood up and said that, no, we need to protect this idea around the world that nations cannot just be, um, that, 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 that territorial integrity is sacrosanct in international diplomacy. And that's what we had said at the United Nations. And that is what the president has said right from the start that we are on the side of peace. And the side of peace is that sovereign nations should protect their sovereignty. That is the starting point. And so we are hoping in our time here in Australia to continue doing what the president has ordered us to do, to promote peace, to let our friends here in Australia know that we are here to promote peace. And there is no timeline to that. As long as an opportunity presents itself for us to bring any sides together, to express our opinion on any matter, peace becomes very, very essential. Remember, if you don't have peace, you can't enjoy any prosperity. If you don't have peace, you can't enjoy the good things that you are trying to work on. And every economy is dependent on another. And so if our neighbors are, peace, are at peace, then we as a country are going to be at peace. And the question is now, who is our neighbor? And I think I'm going to deal with it in the next segment or so. Our neighbor, of course, it's our eight or nine neighbors. The president has said that there is a ninth neighbor by the Lake Tanganyika. Quite all right, we have those nine neighbors, but beyond that, we also have neighbors who, who's who, who are of consequence to, to us, even if they are very far away. And so our role is to ensure that we take a position and we side with peace. Uh, the next segment is uh, promoting bilateral relations. And by promoting bilateral relations, what it really means is that as a country and Australia, Zambia and Australia belong to a family of nations and they are living together. By having a Zambian representative of the president in the capital city of Canberra, we are promoting those bilateral relations. Bilateral simply means friends, bye, two coming together. How do we promote these bilateral relations? We promote these bilateral relations by being present here in Canberra, by participating, rejoicing with the people of, of Australia, sometimes mourning with the people of Australia, just like it happened a few months ago at the passing of Her Majesty the Queen of Australia, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. We mourned with the people of Australia. What that means is that we are enjoying our bilateral relations and we are present here. Australia is also present in Lusaka, but on a non-resident basis, meaning the ambassador to Zimbabwe is the one that takes care of Zambia as well. That is the promotion of bilateral relations. The other the issue with bilateral relations is an encouragement of people-to-people -people cooperation. Australians and Zambians have a long history, beginning from the First Republic, from the times, from the First and Second Republics, from the times of our President Kenneth Kaunda. And throughout these years, there has been co cooperation between our two countries. Cooperation in terms of uh, exchange of um, agricultural expertise, in terms of mining, in terms of education, in terms of people-to-people -people cooperation, business-to-business -business cooperation. It has not, uh, uh, um, so, so that, that is the kind of cooperation that has been um, uh, between Australia and Zambia. And so we are here to promote that. 
and to look out for those opportunities that are going to encourage on bilateral relations. And so it could be just an ordinary Australian who wants to um, involve themselves with what is going on in Zambia. We are here to try and facilitate that. That is where bilateralism comes in. This idea that as one big human family, we can collaborate, we can work together, we can be present in each other's capitals. I've been privileged, of course, uh, when it comes to being in each other's capitals to, um, to, 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 to show presence. We show presence here through various means. First of all, by me as a personal representative of the president accredited to the head of state of Australia, uh, who is uh, King Charles III, but King Charles has a representative, his personal representative here in Australia known as the Governor General. So we present our letters of credence to the Governor General and let the Governor General know that Zambia's uh, president has sent me as his personal representative. That is uh, encouragement of bilateral relations. The other thing is our High Commission is here as well with an official flag of the Republic of Zambia planted on Australian soil to show that we are we are cooperating and we like each other as two nations and we are going to promote the growth of this partnership and this friendship. And so again, sometimes um, uh, sometimes it's, it's um, uh, I was just reading a, a comment there. And so, and so we are going to be, to be present here. And also our residents, our residents also here in, in Australia, by being resident here in Australia, we are showing uh, uh, the promotion of our bilateral relations. Of course, the mission here in Canberra has also been assigned to New Zealand. I have not yet presented my letters of credence to the Governor General of New Zealand. Um, uh, so very soon, once the letters of, uh, of agreement uh, once, once New Zealand gets back to the government of the Republic of Zambia, advising them that they've accepted me to be the president's representative to New Zealand, that's when I'll be a fully accredited high commissioner to New Zealand as well. And so presence does not just mean a, 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 a residential basis, but even on a non-resident basis, you can still show diplomatic presence. And so we are resident in Canberra, for example, but we are non-resident um, mission to New Zealand, but we are um, uh, uh, present in New Zealand, even when we are, we, are, we are not physically resident there. That is how nations cooperate with each other. That is how nations collaborate with each other. That is how nations show presence uh, with each other. That's bilateral relations. The next area is um, promote diaspora engagement. Now, uh, both of you, Mr. Bimbe and Mr. Chilfi, and even myself, we, we belong to the Zambian diaspora. When I was asked by the president to come and be his, 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 his high commissioner here in Australia, I, uh, I'm coming from, from Canada. The president understands the importance of the Zambian diaspora, the expertise that the Zambian diaspora brings to the table. And that's why he has asked us, he has ordered us to prioritize diaspora engagements. Zambians right now, and in fact, your program here every Monday, you have been talking about the kind of uh, uh, diaspora remittances that Zambians are sending to Zambia right now. Zamb diaspora Zambians are sending to Zambia. Once we escalate that issue to the entire Africa, it's billions of dollars that is entering the African economy. That is the focus that the president wants to see, that we engage the Zambian diaspora. How are we engaging the, the Zambian diaspora? Uh, first of all, it's for the Zambian diaspora to know that our missions exist for them. They are our primary uh, customers. And the president has told us, 
We as ambassadors, as missions, we are, we are coming here to respect the, the Zambian diaspora. The Zambian diaspora is not an afterthought. They are not an inconvenience. They are an integral part. During his campaign, the president did mention that the Zambian diaspora is Zambia's 11th province. And he is backing that campaign promise with clear steps towards recognizing the important role that the Zambian diaspora is doing. On our part as a mission here in Australia, I make it a priority that each time I am visiting another area, now, now Australia is a continent or a subcontinent, very, very huge, huge country. And we are at the eastern, um, almost at the eastern corner of, um, of, of Australia and Canberra, not like at the, in the middle. The, the capital city, Canberra, is, 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 is in the east. But when I have an opportunity to visit other towns, I make sure that I send word to Zambians so that I can meet them. By having a high commissioner visit, we are trying to show that the Zambian diaspora is an integral part of our business here. When we went to New Zealand during um, the draws for the Women's FIFA World Cup, I met Zambians. It was an honor to meet them. We, of course, discussed various um, concerns that they have. And we as government, we as, uh, as a mission, are trying to work through all their concerns. The, 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 the other issue with uh, diaspora engagement is the constitution. The constitution of Zambia now does say that once you are a Zambian, you will never lose your Zambian citizenship. Now, that is a huge, huge order that the constitution of Zambia has given to the government of Zambia. The way the, way the constitution works is the constitution is a living document. Government derives its power from the constitution. As a matter of fact, government should make its laws from the constitution. And so the constitution, the constitution as amended in 2016, has instructed government that no Zambian loses their citizenship. Now, in order for government to be in compliant with the constitution of the Republic of Zambia. Government wants to know where those citizens are. That's why we are asking Zambians in Australia to let us know where they are. It's very simple. It, it could be just an email. Now we are still working on our website and the access to the forms for registration, but you can just go, even if you Google, you, you find our email address there, canberra at grz.gov.zm. Just introduce yourself. Tell us your name. Tell us your contact uh, number. Tell us your address. That's it. We need to keep that information, again, because of what the Constitution tells us. Now, you may think that this is not important. Some, some, some of our diaspora citizens are like, no, we don't, we have nothing to do with uh, anything going on and we don't bother us. But because of what the constitution commands us to do, that is why we need that information so that we can save you. Now, of course, even if you as an individual say that you don't want to register with the mission, remember, you also have children. And the constitution says that a child of a citizen, guess what, is a citizen. Even if England Canada, constitution says they are citizens. Therefore, if we do not have a way to register you, to capture you, what will happen is that our country is likely to have Zambian citizens conferred citizenship by the constitution and the government has no idea where they are. 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years from now. And that's why we are prioritizing diaspora engagements to register citizens.
Now, the president has said it on several occasions. He understands the kind of inconveniences that, that come with access to national documents. And that's why Zambia is, is on a project to digitize access to registration documents. So that right from birth, there will be one clear digital footprint through which uh, uh, government can, can, can have access to serving its citizens better. That the, the di digitization process is still ongoing and we are hoping that once that is complete, we are going to uh, uh, bring it to the Zambian diaspora as well. As we are working towards that, in the meantime, there is a lot of patience that we require in order for Zambians in the diaspora to have access to their national documents. It could involve changing of the law now as a, as, as a civil servant and um, uh, we follow the current guidelines that are in place. The current guidelines right now, the regulations and the law are that for a person, for a Zambian to obtain their NRC, they must be physically present in Zambia. So now imagine, Mr. Chulfi and Mr. Dimbe, you have uh, children, some, some of them, you may have immigrated with them to the UK when they were very young, maybe two years old, three years old. For them to acquire a national registration card, they must travel back to Zambia, be physically present in Zambia in order to access an NRC. We are hoping that one day, of course, there could be some changes. And this is what I'm hearing from the Zambian diaspora here in Australia. They are like, look, uh, just paying a ticket for a family of three or four to Lusaka in order for the children to obtain their NRCs might be an expensive venture that as the regulations stand today you need to do that um, my children of course turned 16 as well when i was in canada so we had to go back to zambia have them obtain their nrcs um, in order for them to have access to to other national documents now an nrc does not confer citizenship now, that is what our diaspora uh, colleagues need to know. It does not confer citizenship. It's a registration of that citizenship. And the whole reason why you are registering your citizenship is that you, is that you can have access to government programs and government can know uh, where its citizens are uh, primarily. Uh, so the diaspora engagement also involves um, tapping into the brains of the diaspora. We have expertise among the diaspora. We have experts in, in different fields. And so it is hoped that um, the Zambian government and the people of Zambia are going to tap into that expertise. And that's why just a few months ago, the Republic of Zambia circulated the, the invitation from Zambians in the diaspora to volunteer their time through the a public-private partnership a program that is ongoing with the government of Zambia to volunteer their time, to recognize the sector experts in their various fields. That is going to be used as a, as a database by which uh, uh, the, the government of Zambia can then invite and, and co-opt the experts from the Zambian diaspora. In addition to, 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 to that, the president has deliberately, in fact, gone into the Zambian diaspora and invited them back to serve the government. And when it comes to the foreign service, I am one of them uh, who was called in to become a high commissioner. And I'm aware that there are several others that have been invited to be uh, first secretaries, second secretaries, and in some cases, third secretaries. And the reason why the president did that is because he recognizes the particular uh, contribution that the diaspora can make uh, to, to the country. In terms of um, measurable goals, as far as the diaspora is concerned here, I will be meeting with the diaspora at least every quarter. Um, we will be having uh, discussions with them every quarter. Uh, the first meeting will be coming up very shortly and uh, we will inform 
the Zambian diaspora accordingly. The other thing is, in terms of um, um, our response as a mission to them, I have instructed our staff to ensure that every email we receive, every inquiry we receive from the Zambian diaspora, we respond immediately when we receive it. Now, of course, I do realize that when there is change, we might take a little bit of time to catch on with it, but I'm requiring immediate response, acknowledging an email, and then once it comes to my desk or to the desk of any other officers at our mission that we react to it within two days. I am hoping that by doing that, we are going to be providing answers to the diaspora because I have heard their concerns. They are saying, we write emails to the mission and we never received not even an acknowledgement at all. So we want to change that. So those are measurable uh, uh, goals that uh, we have ourselves, uh, constant dialogue with the Zambian diaspora, uh, timely response to their concerns. And then of course, encouraging from the Zambian diaspora, their direct investment uh, back home. Now, having lived in the diaspora, I know that most of our people are working very, very hard in the diaspora. They don't have a lot of money to spare. It's not like, you know, uh, contrary to some popular beliefs, the diaspora are not necessarily just um, from the trees, money does not grow from the trees. But they do have contacts in their host nations. Like here in Australia, you might have a contact with somebody who is interested in the Zambian story. So what we are saying is talk about Zambia, market Zambia, be an ambassador for Zambia. Um, uh, if it's the materials that you, you need and, 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 and we are very happy that the Zambia Development Agency has allowed us to reproduce some of the materials that they have about investments potential back home. And so in order for us to, to continue with um, diaspora engagements, we are going to be having regular uh, 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 trade, trade shows. And that's, that therefore brings me to the, to the last item, which is economic diplomacy, the big thing that, that we have. And what that is, is to encourage investments between Australia and Zambia, to encourage trade and to promote it. And so we are hoping that we are going to have two trade um, missions. One trade missions is going to take Australians, Australian business people and those interested into, into Zambia. The other trade missions and in the half of the year will be to take Zambian businesses to bring them into, into Australia. And that's why from the economic um, uh, diplomacy perspective, we are hoping that the Australia Zambia Business Council, which is back in business, is going to be that private sector driven uh, council that is going to be used to, 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 to help facilitate for these trade, trade missions. We are working very closely with the Zambia Development Agency to encourage uh, uh, these business partnerships. Uh, we are still going to be working through the networks of various business entities here in Australia that are focused on Africa, that are focused on Zambia to encourage the growth of, of, of that um, um, interaction. So in terms of economic diplomacy, we are envisioning two trade missions. One that brings Zambians here to Australia and the other one that brings uh, Australians to, to Zambians at least in 2023. It's a very, very big uh, goal that we have set for ourselves, but it's better to set ourselves with a bigger goal and perhaps do half than set a small goal and do 200% of it. And so that is, that is what we are working on. The private sector is important. Again, the growth of Zambia's economy is going to be centered on what the private sector does. And because of that, we have been ordered to encourage that private sector driven growth in our country. And, um, and so the Australia Zambia Business Council is an integral part of that. And it is led by Mr. George Mdale at the moment. And um, uh, there are several other 
um, uh, uh, citizens that are part of it. And we are encouraging Australian businesses to be part of the Australia Zambia Business Council. Uh, Australian diaspora associations, Aus uh, Australian diaspora business people to be part of this business council. The other thing that I do, I don't just travel to go and meet uh, the Zambians, but I also travel to go and meet their businesses. And so uh, when I was in Perth, I met some uh, uh, business people and, uh, and what they are doing, be it Miss Nkandu Belts, who is trying to invest in exploration of our minerals in, in Zambia. I met uh, uh, Mr. Mlombwa, who, um, who runs a health care uh, business in Perth. And in New Zealand, I met um, a Reverend Fumbirwa, who leads his congregation there, one of the, um, the churches that are doing very fine in New Zealand. And through this, we are reaching out to businesses. And there are several other businesses that have reached out to us. And I am looking for ways in which I can go and, and visit and encourage um, uh, their, their, their growth, listen to their concerns, and see how they can also expand uh, into, into Zambia. Um, from the Zambian perspective, the growth of our economy is going to be driven by both local uh, ingenuity, but also by foreign direct investments. As a matter of fact, even here in Australia itself, imagine Australia, a, an over one uh, trillion dollar economy, it still is investing in attracting foreign direct investment. Uh, China itself is encouraging foreign direct investment. So is the US, so is um, uh, European countries. And that's no different with Zambia as well. So, so to attract investment is not the same as ceding control of your country. No. In order for us to grow our economy in Zambia, we need that foreign direct investment. And so our presence here in Australia is to be present where the action is. Australia is a big mining country, is a big agricultural country. And we want to say that we are here to help direct some of that investment into, into Zambia. And when that happens, there will be very good um, uh, uh, relations that are going to develop. Now, tied to economic diplomacy is also cultural, cultural diplomacy. The idea that promotion of culture, promotion of art, promotion of music, promotion of sport, is an integral part to growing our economy. This year, the Copper Queens are coming to New Zealand and Australia for the FIFA World Cup, pro, uh, presenting huge opportunities for people to begin talking about Zambia. Now, how is that going to, 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 to work? The group games are in New Zealand. Auckland and Hamilton in July. Before July, we are hoping that the private sector are going to come together and see that they brand Zambia because this presents an opportunity for the government, of course, for the people of Zambia, for, for, for Australians and New Zealanders to talk about Zambia. But it also presents an opportunity for businesses that is why Zambian businesses need to look at the World Cup as an opportunity for them to market their products in this part of the world. Be it agricultural produce, mining, manufacturing, uh, labor, um, and, 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 and all this, or health. It's an opportunity for them. So if Zambian businesses have ideas about how they can leverage the women's participation in the in the FIFA World Cup, you're welcome to contact us. Of course, the, 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 we, we have encouraged the, the Association of Zambians in New Zealand to be at the forefront, to encourage the private sector to come together so that they can see 
how they can leverage on uh, the Copper Queen's presence to, to promote Zambia, to promote culture, to promote sport, and to promote their own businesses. And so that is one of the highlights of what we are looking forward to, to, to having. Dr. Munsha, that question was loaded, but you've answered it very well. And uh, it's a pity a lot of people joined us late and they didn't know what the question was, but, but the responses are fantastic. And we'll go through some of them later. But then before I do that, or I ask you a follow-up question, Mr. Bimbe, have you got any question, any comment for Dr. Munsha? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chirufian. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. That was wonderful. Uh, you've covered a lot of ground, a lot of areas that are really critical uh, uh, to your mission and to the Zambian uh, diplomatic uh, strategy as a whole. Um, I've got a few questions that will be coming out actually from there uh i might start with the first one i've got a number of them in various uh various uh, bits that you've talked about but the first one that comes to mind is uh uh i know the the african union has been you know i've had this motto of silencing the guns stopping the small arms and i'm glad to hear that zambia is actually proactive uh in helping in that area for example you mentioned mozambique uh, Somali and the car. There are also other sentiments. I don't know whether you be you want to answer this question. Is the the bipolar world we live in, or it used to be? Uh, there's been a lot of talk back home that Zambia has somehow shifted from the east to the west, although the government insists it's uh, it's not the same. Uh, what do you have any comment on that? I think the president has uh, has aptly answered that question. And when he was asked, and sometimes when um, the other political players in our country tried to paint the idea that Zambia has abandoned the East or has abandoned the West or anything like that, the president said this government is looking at the interests of the Zambian people. It is the welfare of Zambians that comes first. And the president wants to prioritize that welfare. What that means is that if we have to do trade, then we do trade with everybody in a way that benefits the people of Zambia. In other words, our political ideologies are not going to be used as an impediment towards economic growth. And the president looked at data because, because he's data-driven. One of the things that you're going to see with President Haga and the Hichilema is data-driven. He sees that the development that has taken place around the world in this past century happened as a result of collaboration between the East and the West. As we are talking right now, Russia, of course, they, they are under a lot of sanctions, but they trade with Germany, they trade with it, they trade with the West, be it in oil or other uh, uh, things. China itself, China and the United States are very big trade partners. That should not be different regarding Zambia. Zambia must trade with the world in order to bring prosperity to its people. And that is the priority of President Hara in the each level. He has not said that no one, no friend has been abandoned. Friends continue to be friends. And friends are going to encourage friends to trade together so that every Zambian is fed.
thank you very much for that uh, uh, response. Do uh, you have any comment, Mr. Chimufia? Uh, Dr. Munsha, on, on, on that question um, uh, Mr. Bimbe asked, you remember under Kaunda, we were we, we had a foreign policy uh, called non, non-aligned nations. Is, is is that similar to to what we are trying to do now? Or... Well, Zambia, no, our our country still remains now. When you are talking of non-aligned, it was during the time that we had obvious. Uh, issues between the East and the West. The world has changed significantly since then. As a matter of fact, the major players of the non-aligned movement itself, they have engaged economically with the old um, um, uh, enemy, so to speak. Why can't Zambia do that? Again, the focus is on the stomachs of the people of Zambia. The president looked at that and said, we are going to be a nation that prioritizes our people's stomachs so that every child is fed and every child goes to school. That is what is informing the president's current actions. That's fantastic. Uh... Dr. Munsha. Dr. Mr. Bimbe, before you come in, I've got a small question for uh, Dr. Munsha. Dr. Munsha, on economic diplomacy, you've, you've really articulated it very well. And there, there's some comments here which you will bring them in later. Um, and you also mentioned that the president, which I believe is a data driven person, and Mr. Bimbe here is a data person he talks about data all the time but then yeah. but then a lot of people are asking here that what you're saying dr munsha is fantastic and a lot of zambian business people wants information about australia but they are saying that information cannot be found at zda zda or anywhere on the website in zambia why can't zambia here in the uk we've got uk.gov you can find literally everything. If you want to do a passport, everything will be there. Why can't we have such a, a central portal of, of, of information or knowledge? Over to you, Dr. Munch. Uh, yes, indeed. And from um, our perspective here at the mission, we, we believe that, that, that information is very important, data is very important, and that's why the government of President Haga in the Hichilema is investing in the digitization project so that we can bring that um, uh, information and that data to the people. Um, right now, though, uh, you can take advantage of the websites that, that, that we have, the ministry's websites. Of course, some of them um, uh, are lagging behind in terms of, of updates, but the Minister of Finance is one of those that have been at the forefront. Uh, almost all of their press statements are, uh, are accessible. Uh, the Zambia Statistical Agency uh, website has also got quite uh, uh, good data there that can be accessed. But yes, we know, and that's why the government is working on ensuring that there is accessibility to, to these services. In terms of national registration documents, of course, um, it's, it's up to the policy from the politicians to amend regulations in such a way that uh, children that are um, outside of Zambia can still be able to access and have their citizenship registered with a Green National Registration Card. Um, but the project for the Smart Zambia is still ongoing, lots of investments there, and the president has prioritized it. That's fantastic, uh, Dr. Musha. Over to you, Mr. Bimbe. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Musha, for that uh, highlight. Uh, yeah, my next question actually would touch a little bit on what you've said. Um, I mean, I like the idea of uh, digitizing uh, everything and having government share digital data 
and having that information. There's one point that you, you really mentioned that caught my, my mind is this idea of a fully non-presence and you know, engagement, citizen engagement with the government, i.e. Uh, getting a national registration card and that kind of thing. I think that would be quite helpful. Uh, my question is then, it goes further and say, are you also trying to talk to other, maybe the private sector within Zambia to kind of also do the same, including some quasi-government agencies, for example, uh, to sign a, something to do with land, one has to travel to Zambia. To open a bank account in Zambia, one has to travel to Zambia. So it's those kind of um, barriers that can create uh, issues for, uh, you know, tapping into the, this diaspora skills you mentioned, uh, funding, connections, and networking. So I would... My, my 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 encouragement is is it something that you are thinking about as as a, as a government basically yes uh, the minister of technology and um, uh, headed by uh, honorable Ntati is promoting um, the digital economy a uh, digital transformation and that's why you see several initiatives that are being done to ensure that we, we, we leverage on the, on the digital transformation. Um, the, the, the president has, 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 has said it even, even during his um, opening of, of, of the present parliament, he, he, he emphasized on the fact that we need to grow our digital resources, uh, grow digital investments uh, that is being encouraged. Uh, companies in Zambia, banks in Zambia, uh, have realized the immense potential that the uh, diaspora provides. And I believe there are several banks right now that have got products for diaspora Zambians um, where they can verify your identity. And you know, Mr. Chilufi and Mr. Bimbe, that right now verification of identity is a huge thing. And that has been a major barrier to growth of uh, banking services. But both Zanaco and I believe Stanchat, um, but I know I'm very sure of Zanaco, they have a product for the Zambian diaspora to open a bank account. And so I would like to encourage um, Zambians here in Australia to contact Zanaco. Um, if, and, and in fact, we are going to, to, when we have those trade shows, those are some of the uh, services that we are going to be, to be emphasizing so that the Zambians here in Australia know that they can actually access uh, some of those digital services. Mr. Bimbe, uh, okay, Dr. Munsha, that was, that was fantastic. I want to bring you back to diaspora engagement. I think, I think what the government is doing and what you're doing, Dr. Munsha, is fantastic. Actually, I've got a comment here from my one of my friends. She's based in the UK. She's been in the UK for a long time. And um, um, and she's got some investments in Zambia. I won't mention her name. But what she's saying is such, such forums are very important. And she's also mentioning that in London, there are monthly town halls. This never used to happen in, in the previous government. The embassy did not even care about us you know i don't know where they came here to drink or to do something but this is now happening and information is, is is starting to trickle being provided to to zambians but what people are saying is we need to have a one source information oh that's smart zambia um um, um uh, statistics all that information linked to one place so that if, if somebody wants anything, it can take him to all those places, ZDA. But that wasn't my question. But the question is on the diaspora engagement. You know, uh, the president has made a huge statement stating that we are the 11th province and, and also has realized that Zambians are important, you know, um, uh, who, are in the, who are in the diaspora. But the question, uh, Dr. Munsha, I want to ask you, Zambia is 
is still lacking behind in terms of diaspora engagement. When you look at countries like Kenya, Ghana, they've even gone a, 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 a further to deal with this diaspora engagement. You know, some of them, they've got even a diaspora uh, representative at cabinet or at Minister of Health, like Kenya and Ghana. And Kenya also, also does census of the Kenyans living abroad. And not only that, they even go beyond and calculate the GDP of Kenyans living abroad. And then in some other countries, the, the diaspora vote. You know, so like African, African, uh, or a, what do they call it? African unity. They can be a diaspora desk there, representing all, all African diaspora at the African Union. What do you think about that? What are your comments, Dr. Mush? Yes, so uh, the, nature, the nature of my job is that of, um, of, a, of a representative. So a representative of, of the president and speaking on behalf of the president. I don't deal with, um, with, uh, with policy changes or policy matters. So those are supposed to be, to be directed to my boss, um, the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, who is the, 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 the political head of our, of our department. And so he's the one who would be able to answer policy uh, suggestions that you may have. So my role is to work within the regulations that we currently have, educate our citizens about the current programs that we have and, and, and the programs that the, 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 the government is envisioning. But it's not to provide a wider perspective of, uh, of, of where we need to, to, to go to. Uh, for example, yes, there is a diaspora desk at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and some of our citizens have been very well helped by that uh, diaspora desk. And yes, there, there are efforts that are being done right now to digitize um, government services. And the president has mentioned that he's working on that. And um, the, even the Minister of Technology is, is working on, on that. But it is a continuing uh, program. My role is to, 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 to inform and speak on behalf of the president and represent him. Um, of course, there is some questions about uh, what should ambassadors do? What should ambassadors be talking? As a matter of fact, it's the ambassador's jobs to actually talk and communicate what their government is, is doing. And that is, that is my, my, my role um, in that regard. Um, regarding the involvement of embassies, I would like to commend the London, the High Commission of the Republic of Zambia in London and the efforts that it is making in speaking with Zambians every month. I've heard of that here and I would like to commend them because there is a change in what the president has ordered us to do as missions. Those days of ambassadors sitting in their offices, drinking tea and coffee, and they are embassy staff just sitting and drinking a coffee are long gone. We've been ordered now to engage. We've been ordered out of our offices in order to deliver. Because we are part and parcel of the pieces that are going to fall together for, for, for Zambia to develop. That's why we are doing what we are doing. There is no mistake about somebody, I think, is saying that uh, is, uh, is, is, is am I bored that now I've begun to talk. That is our job as ambassadors. It is to talk on behalf of our country. It is to talk on behalf of our president. It is to meet Zambians in that and do so directly to advise them of, the, of where their country is at, to encourage them to invest back home, to let them know that Zambia is making all these investments and, and to, to make them know that Zambia is present here in Australia. That's fantastic, uh, Dr. Munsha. Mr. Bimbe, have you got any question? Um, it's just a comment, probably. Uh, it, it, I mean, what the threads of uh, the conversation I can see flying around is this lack of information, lack of data. I think 
it's been a theme throughout our discussions in most uh, uh, in, in, in a lot of uh, the shows that we've had. Um, I'm, I'm glad you are you 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 mentioned that uh, that is coming up, but the problem is there isn't that information that something is coming up. For you. <laughs> so there's information of something, but also information about something. So it seems that isn't 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 happening very well. So it's something that I think um, needs to happen a lot, uh, especially within the embassies and uh, others. I mean, in in most most of the countries, for example, in the UK, they only have one website for the, all the government, which offers both transactional and informational. So everybody knows where to go find stuff. Uh, in Zambia, I think we've got two. One of them is just a directory of <laughs> kind of thing. So that really needs to improve. Uh, you also mentioned about this um, diaspora private something, uh, asking diaspora people from the diaspora to register with uh, some database. Um, I wonder if you have any idea what is going on with that project because it's been quiet if you have any information yes no the the, the deadline for for that was extended to november uh, this is just january so i believe that uh, the, the, the the ministry is still working on it okay, okay that that's fantastic dr mush I'll, I'll be just now popping in some uh, comments from uh, uh, the viewers, and if you can comment, you can comment. I'll start with this one. Conducting business in Zambia for diaspora has many challenges when one has to process documents in Zambian offices, especially in city councils. Transparency of information is one of the bigger problems. I think this needs to be looked into. Dr. Munsha, this lady, I know her. She's a friend of mine, and she's got some businesses in Zambia. Over to you, Dr. Munsha. Yes, indeed. Like I've, uh, like I've mentioned, um, the president is encouraging investments of Zambians back home. And um, he is backing up that uh, commitment with clear, clear action. That's why we have the diaspora desk at the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs. And yes, my encouragement to Zambians in the diaspora is when you are making all these efforts, please try to engage with the, the Zambian nations as much as possible. We want to know what is going on, what you are doing. Uh, perhaps we can we can help communicate uh, on your behalf or advise about uh, some of the things that you are doing. Of course, the Zambian missions do not replace your due diligence. You can still go ahead and um, uh, do your due diligence, investigate the kind of businesses you want to be involved in, try to see whether it's viable or not. But of course, uh, Zambia missions come in to uh, provide guidance, uh, to provide advice as, uh, as and when uh, it is needed. Well, what is clear from what the, the government is, is doing is it's a journey towards that digital transformation. And so far, so good. You know, there are always setbacks here and there, but the digital transformation has been ongoing. Uh, companies act right now. You can register a company um, uh, digitally. You, you fill out the forms, you sign, and, uh, and, and, and companies can be, can be registered. You can have only one agent or so in Lusaka, and they can, they can help you uh, with that. So there are so many problems. Uh, 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 progressive things that are, that are ongoing, and if you have anything, uh, any ideas of things that are not working, please continue speaking with us. We are going to then send a transmission transmitter to Lusaka about what the Zambian diaspora are, are saying. Here in Australia, I believe that Australia Zambia Business Council is going to become that cardinal hub that we can use. To, to, to have the information, share ideas, share investment, uh, share even share capital and uh, share information 
And so we are looking forward to that. But we want to be private sector driven, and then we come in and, uh, as, as a mission to partner with the, with the council. I think that's fantastic. And yeah, you're partially right, uh, Dr. Musha. Things are happening in Zambia. I was in Zambia six months ago, and um, I needed a tipping number you know, to open a, a bank account with one of the banks. And I wanted to rush to Zedara. I was told it can be done electronically, and it was done. So things are happening. But all what we need is one, port, one, one point of uh, uh, data storage. And I and I, I pray it will happen one day. So another another comment here from uh, Mubanga Nasieko. I know this is Dr. Tobias. You know Dr. Tobias. I don't know why he's using a different name. Dr. Munsha, how can all Zambian high commissions and embassies read from the same page? This is what we are talking. It's like having one 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 portal for all embassies in Zambia. And people can see that information. What are the opportunities in Australia? What are the opportunities in Canada? They seem to be doing different things. Some don't even help their citizens. Secondly, when is e-government coming? And this is what we've been talking about, e-government. So it's like all Zambians. This is a Zambian in South Africa, based in Cape Town. Over to you, Dr. Munsha. I, uh, I think uh, we have we have spoken about uh, e-government. Maybe mm. that question was was or maybe it was missed. And and e-government is indeed coming, and the president is working on this transformation agenda. The minister of technology and um, and e-government, uh, uh, with one of his portfolios being e-government and Smart Zambia, is working very tirelessly on on that. Uh, private sector companies are also uh, are working on that registration of companies, the ZRA tax payment systems, or even applying for a TPIN. You know, you apply for it. Just, just you know, I went to open a bank account in, at Zanaco, and I was. They asked me for a TPIN, and I was able to apply for a TPIN within minutes. I received it, and I opened uh, the account. So, so the, the, the progress is there um, uh, regarding the experiences that some of you have had with, uh, with, with embassies. Please, if you have any concerns, you can always channel those concerns through the appropriate channels to the minister or to the permanent secretaries, um, or you can use your own uh, uh, ways of communicating what you feel dissatisfied with. Our what we've been ordered to do is to be there for the for the people of Zambia and to serve them. And that's why when Zambians were in trouble in some of these countries, the president did intervene and uh, to, to help. Um, that's exactly what we've been ordered to do and we are going to continue doing that. Here in Australia, New Zealand and the islands, uh, that's what we are, we are, we are hoping to do. Now that was fantastic, Dr. Munsha. Before Mr. Bimbe comes in, um, I asked you a question, and you said uh, uh, you are not involved in policy, but uh, and, and your boss is the one who involved in policy. But Dr. Munsha, as you as you are working in diaspora, our our Minister of Foreign Affairs is not in Zambia, though he's involved in policy. You'll be receiving a lot of questions, a lot of um, inquiries from Zambians. And some of those issues are not in the in the policy. So don't you think you can influence policy? You can provide information from which policy can be influenced or can be implemented over time. Oh, oh yes. Oh yes. Oh so definitely. So so the concerns that the diaspora has can be channeled through our channels and then we send it over to Lusaka. But we are not so 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 I'm not a vision caster in terms of our political priorities um, in terms of our policy priorities. So I thought the question that I was asked was, uh, what, what is my, my, my vision or anything like that? No, we, we serve under the umbrella of what the president has ordered us to do. So for example, in terms of, um, um, I've just uh, uh, forgotten what the question was, was, was about. That's why I say that, no. Those are those are some of the some of the policy matters can only be commented by by our political superiors. Um, uh, so, but but we are here. We can 
we can certainly uh, channel the, the concerns and the questions that, that the people of Zambia have. We just, I just wanted to make sure that we, I stay within what, uh, what, 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 what I can do, what I'm authorized to, to do. That, that's but yes, we are, we are receiving feedback and we are channeling it. Like concerns about, uh, and for example, let's look at the regulation for NRCs. The, 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 the appropriate officer to say whether there is a policy change in NRC is not me, it would be the, the, the minister and the president or cabinet. They're the ones who, who say that. For me, it's to communicate that, um, the, that there is dual nationality and your children that have turned 16, they're still Zambian because that is what the law says. That's what the constitution says. And, and, and right now there is no change at the moment that empowers 16 year olds who live in London to obtain to register their citizenship unless they traveled. So maybe we can make it easier for traveling. How do we make it easier? Maybe access to a national document that makes a person travel one way to Lusaka, sort out their issue in Lusaka, obtain their analysis, obtain their passports, and then uh, come back. That's fantastic. Yeah, there's a comment here from Brenda again. He says, um, Pakra, Ezla, working electronically well. The gatekeeping agencies, government organization that frustrates the diaspora conducting business. I speak from go uh, uh, ongoing challenges experience. And, and uh, I agree with you, Dr. Musha. I know a lot of Zambians were in the diaspora. They can't get their title deeds. So they have to go to Zambia, for all, you, know, you know, in and out of Zambia, spending a lot of money just to get a title jeans, and they are frustrated. So how do you do business? You know, that was just a comment. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Bimbe, before uh, Mr. Dr. Musha can give his uh, uh, closing remarks, any closing remarks from you? Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, Mr. Binde, <laughs> not yet a yeah. doctor. Oh, oh, oh. Before, before, before you go there, <laughs> there's just something for doc, uh, Dr. Munsha here. It's just a comment. It would be nice <laughs> to have passport renewal processes done outside the country, that is at the embassy. If this can, can now be done online, it would save so much pro, uh, process of sending documents back to Zambia, which is costly. So people are still digital um, e, 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 e governance, but Ms. Dr. Munch, we've been talking about. Yes. Over to you, over to you, Doctor uh, Mr. Bimbe. I'm, I'm now saying, Doctor Bimbe. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. Over to you. Any any comments, questions, closing remarks, I mean, and then Doctor Munsha would give his closing remarks. Then we thank, close the thank show. Thank you very much. This is for me. It's just a, a, just an observation or rather a reflection. I. I've, uh, I've read a number of art your articles, Dr. Mushara, especially where you do your reflection on Kalindula music, on which I love them. Uh, having, you know, you've put across what you plan to do, and I would want to hear from you whether there will be some kind of reflex reflections on what you've done, what has worked, and what is not working. The reason I'm asking that is how then do we um, share that knowledge with the other embassies? And this is where my question, how much do you guys uh, within the Zambian embassies, how do you share notes, what works, what doesn't work? And Dr. Musha, yeah. before you answer that question, just hold that thought. That question has been asked by a lot of people asking, do these embassies speak together? We want a one one place where you can have all the information about embassies, what they are doing, and what what and what they are, you know, what and people can see that. Over to you, Dr. Munsha, and your closing remarks. Thank you so much. I think I think the one of the reflections in my new role here, and and remember, I am four months. So this January I'll be four months. Which is and but but it feels like I've been doing this for many years. It's just four months. What I have found is um, 
there is a lot of engagement that has gone on previously and we want to go back and re-establish those links. Uh, speak again with institutions that we've already been in talks with. Um, it's not necessarily a whole new slate, a uh, new beginning at all. It's rather a restoration, a renewal. And that's why I work with a very wonderful team. Um, and so we are hoping to, to work on that. But integral to this plan is the Zambian diaspora itself. They live here in Australia. They've lived here for many years. Therefore, they know Australia uh, very well. And so when I visit, I'm trying to learn as much as possible from them about um, uh, what, what worked in the past, what can work now, and, and, and how we can engage where they are at. Um, so, so we have miners, we have business owners, we have people in manufacturing, we've got energy experts. We've got several, several uh, people here that we are hoping we are going to, to, to work together. I think there's going to be a lot of changes as far as the way we operate as missions, the pre because that's what the president has told us. In fact, each time there is a swearing in of an ambassador, listen to the president. He says, economic diplomacy, let's prioritize a processing of documents for, 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 for Zambians and let's speed up the process. And so for me as an operative here, I'm trying to see how we are going to speed up the process. Um, the passports, for example, we have to send uh, passports through a diplomatic bag to Lusaka, and then they come back through a diplomatic bag and we only have one. So we've tried to ask our headquarters to send us two bags so that when we send one, we can be working on another and then we keep just uh, circulating them like that. Maybe that will help speed up the process. The other thing is information, as many uh, supporting documents as possible. You yourself, as a person applying for a passport, you know, there are some passport applications that come with missing information, you know, and then we have to follow up and say this information is missing. Sometimes it goes to Lusaka and then Lusaka sends it back. And so you as a person applying for the passport, you may have only one, one shot at it, make sure that you fill out all those empty spaces with as much information as possible to make it easy for us as your facilitators and for the Ministry of Home Affairs once it gets to, to Zambia. Right now, it is not the Foreign Affairs Ministry that deals with passports. We are only agents for the Ministry of Home Affairs in receiving this in me as an, as an ambassador signing off on, on it and uh, witnessing your, your administering your oath um, your affidavit, but other than that, we send it to headquarters and then it goes to the Minister of Home Affairs. And there's going to be a lot of change in that regard, in the sense that the President is asking us to speed up the process. And once the digitization process is complete with Smart Zambia, I believe that those are some of the services that are going to be accessible online. And I look forward to that. Uh, our colleagues around the world are working very, very hard. The, the missions themselves are working uh, very hard and I'm very proud of the team that I work with here in Australia and New Zealand and some of our colleagues. Uh, one of the things I do with um, my page on Facebook, again, it's information sharing. The, 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 there was this idea that an ambassador disappears from public view, you know, and they don't speak. Well, that is an odd thing. Um, it's no longer like that. And I think our people need to know that that's no longer the, the case. Ambassadors do not disappear from public view. My colleague, the American ambassador in Zambia is not, is not disappeared from public view. They are, they are present, they are, they are representing their country. We are also not going to disappear from the Australian public view. And it so happens that the Australian public view is also online, it's on Facebook, it's on Twitter. And so we are present there as well. Um, so, so for other missions, they are working hard and I encourage all of us as diaspora Zambians not to be afraid of our missions anymore. That fear is gone. Let us engage with them. If you have any concerns, channel those concerns to them or to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. 
but there is a huge, I'm getting this report that there is a huge cultural shift in the way we are relating with, with, with citizens and carrying out our core business. Dr. Monsha, that was fantastic. You know, the last point you've made is, is actually true. Up to now, I've never seen an ambassador being interviewed on a, a Zambian media. You know, and uh, a lot of Zambians think ambassadors are not civil servants and they shouldn't talk to, to people. They should just sit in those countries and disappear. The next time we're going to hear is an ambassador has been recalled or whatever. But what you've done today makes people think ambassadors are actually needed. You know, ambassadors should be talking to Zambians. They are, they are civil servants. They are paid by our taxpayers' money. And I pray that I should have so many ambassadors as guests here on our show after, you've, after your, your show. And Dr. Munsha, I know it's so early in the morning. I woke you up so early in the morning in Australia. And I, I do apologize, but I'm not apologizing because this program has been very educative to Zambians. So I'm not apologizing on that. And you are a civil servant. I pay you for that. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. But that was a fantastic program. And thank you so much for waking up so early in the morning. Come on the show, educate the Zambians. This has been a very good program. I can see from the comments. And I pray that we continue. And we're going to call you maybe after a year or two to come and tell us, you know, what you've achieved you know, these objectives or the, 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 the focus area you've given us, what you've achieved. Because Zambians need to know what you're doing. You need to report to us or to them. Thank you so much, Dr. Musha, once again. And well, thank uh, you so much. Mr. Chilofe, and, and it's true. Um, it's uh, we, we are paid by the taxpayers. And that's why we are accountable to the Zambian people. Um, of course, in terms of supervision, the whole country can't supervise an ambassador, but we have channels of supervision. But yes, and nearly everything that we are doing here is for the Zambian people. And even um, symbols of Zambia's presence here you know, in Canberra, it is, it is for the Zambian people. You know, um, the, the, it, the chancery offices where we are, or our residents, it is a public uh, place. It's, it belongs to the Zambian people. And right now I'm looking over and I'm, I'm looking at the flag. It belongs to the Zambian people. So the idea that ambassadors are supposed to disappear and only um, uh, you know, sit behind their offices are gone. Uh, this is your, your country to, to the Zambians in Australia. Your country is here. Your embassy, your high commission is here. Our residence, which is a, a government house, is, is here. It's a, public, it's a public place. Whatever vehicles we drive, it, is, it, it belongs to the people of Zambia. And after our time is done and uh, this period of service is over, somebody else is going to come and take over. And I hope that history is going to be kind the kind of thing that we have done for, for our country. Dr. Munsha, that's fantastic. You know, mm. I like the way you use cultural shift or cultural change, and indeed it is. I've mm. seen some comments, somebody saying, I live in South Africa, the embassy never used to answer calls, not, not even a website. Yeah, here in the UK, I didn't even know the email address of the, the embassy, but things are changing, and for the better. Thank you so much, Dr. Munsha, once again. And we're coming to the end of the programs. Our viewers, thank you so much for your engagement, for your comments, for your viewership. Whenever you're watching us all over the world, may the good Lord bless you. And may the good Lord also bless our beloved Mother Zambia. Thank you so much. Good night and bye for now. Thank you. <laughs>